And guess where we are? Yes, we're here again, committed to Pilates wellbeing amidst a pandemic. So we're going by series week rather than the lockdown week. This is week two of your Pilates repertoire, where we're going back to base and making sure we tick all the boxes in our bodies, not in our imagined bodies, regarding how the Pilates can affect us. So let me know you're in the room. That's a lovely welcome to Janine and to Jane. To Margaret, Patricia, Diane, great to see you here. Ready for your third part of your Pilates repertoire. The workout today therefore being all about developing that connectivity with your body and the actual moves that Joseph Pilates intended. Good morning, Thomas, the boss, and Leslie. Great that you're in the room. Um, the room's cold, obviously, your, your bodies will be cold. <clears throat> if you get yourselves ready, there are no props obviously going to be used that's part of my desi design, is that we won't use props just yet. We'll keep it truly Pilates Basics. And Pilates Basics is not easy. Pilates Basics is demanding. It's video 150 of your Pilates repertoire. Hi Sue and hi Michelle. In one, 150 video, I'm gonna go, it's the third time we'll have done the similar sequence. I'm hoping to add a sequence the aim would be that as we go systematically at this, and that's the commitment, let's do this together, and then we'll discover that six weeks from now, we should feel so different in our strength, the true strength, the true mo movement pattern that flows. This time today, in three of six, the aim would be for me to teach you a little bit more about why you're in that position. And you, by rehearsing these positions, should become consciously able to know where those positions actually are. Good morning, Susan. I want you to be able to know that, yes, this is my bicycle, this is my 100, this is double leg stretch. If you know what's coming up, you can learn more about being in the position and breathing than just thinking, is this what Tanya means? I'm keeping it basic. Morning, Sarah. I'm keeping it simple. That does not mean it's not got an intensity to it. So Pilates requires concentration, and that's what you'll have to do today. Even more so, I think you concentrate when you're behind screen. Good morning, Ken and Lorna. It requires a flow, the ability to move effortlessly but correctly. And that's the connection of breathing and knowing how to move what part of the body, what part is stabilising, what part is being mobilised and responding to the breath of stability. If today you get your brain in gear, focus on nothing, just get your head in the game here, then by the time we come again to this on Wednesday, there'll be a sense of, yeah, I'm getting this and I can feel the benefits on me. Intensity is in the ability to concentrate, to flow from exercise to exercise, to breathe deeply in and out. And they're the three principles that you should kind of access more easily as we go up today. I'm gonna to get going then. With our standing start, as ever, will be as though we've got our heels on the foot bar, the front of our squats. Find yourself in a position, you, you, can, you can face the screen, it won't matter which way you are, it just matters that you know where your pelvis is. Your heels are parallel. If your feet were on the foot bar, you probably have the front of your fist between your heels and your feet would not be turned out or in. Good morning, Rachel. We start then with the squat, inhaling to find the body down there and breathing out to come back up. You know how to squat. Don't assume you can do it easily because the people that always do it in a certain way Every time you're in the studio, I have to correct that way. But because you're relying now on thinking, finding, feeling, you should be getting better. Even Tom, I might add, is getting better at some basic moves. The interesting thing about the squat is that Joseph Pilates didn't do this standing squat. This has been added to by physios and orthopods. The evidence of sports science obviously supplementing the Pilates repertoire. Even people like Stott have now added the front of a squat to some of their stuff. I know in the reformer repertoire, you have your standing squats on the reformer, but the ability to squat every day of your life is really a life skill, just like being able to read or write. Inhaling then down you go, exhaling and up you come. You're finding your form. You're not thinking, oh, let's just get through this. You're letting your mind start to connect with the body from the heel through to your knee joints, through to your pelvis, your hip, that leads to your lower back, leads to your upper back, 
and all the while the breathing starts to become methodical. So the methodology, the inhaling to take the body down and the breathing out to come back up. What's happening biomechanically and kind of musculoskeletally is blood flow. You've got circulation happening, the muscles in the big legs are starting to push blood up and down the system. And so you're starting to involve your respiratory muscles, the heart, the lungs, pumping, and it's a good thing to do. The inhaling and exhaling. Now we're going to add the springy sensation of this. So go down to your squat and allow your arms, without rounding your shoulders, to just flow. Lose the tension that goes around the shoulder. A healthy body will be able to do this sensation of spring-like action. You're designed with the ability in the tendons and the muscles to have that small movement that's rocking almost, isn't it? So inhaling and exhaling. If for some reason this is in your lower back, go back to your squats and realign. If it's in your lower back, it simply means you're not core stabilizing. You aren't finding your heels as though there's a foot bar under them. And the pelvic area, the lower abs, aren't being activated on the exhale. So the inhaling, notice on your abs, and exhaling. We're gonna play with this because it's a lovely feel. Can you allow the sense of um, spring to increase? In other words, the arms, I'm gonna take my side view for you. Your arms are just happily, the shoulder is stable, the abdominals are working, you've got your hamstrings and glutes. We're gonna take it to a three, two, one, and a reach. So you inhale, go down, two, three, exhale, push the ground away and lift the chest to the sky. Find that squat and find the ground to be pushed away and the upper body to reach. Inhaling and exhaling. If this has simply gone into the front of your hip, into your lower back, go back to the straightforward squat, but try and chill out the shoulders and make a better connection with your abdominals Okay, inhaling and exhaling to expansion. Inhaling for the last time and exhale to expansion. Going back to the sensation of being in reform of footworks, you're going to turn out. Pelvic position is neutral. Inhaling, sliding the carriage in, breathing out and pushing away. If you allow your arms to gently move without distorting the shoulder or activating the lower back, middle back. Inhaling, pulling the posture in, breathing out, tuning into whether you can keep equal ground push through both of your legs, okay? So as you go down into that plie squat, your bottom goes back, it's like you're trying to sit something down into a chair, you're becoming a student of your body. You know this movement pattern and the inhale Lowers you backwards, flex of the hip, and the breath out, core connects you from your heels to your trunk front. On the inhale, you'll feel the sides and the inside of the knee, and on the breath out, you'll feel the side bottom and the abdominals. Inhaling into that plie, turned out position of the hip, so this is hip health. Inhale, pull yourself down into your plie squat. Breathe out, push the ground away, properly stand up. Two more, inhaling and exhaling. The next time we'll just go down and stay for a little while, simply ready to tune you in. So your lower back cannot be active. That means your abdominal bikini area has to be active. That means the side bottom has to be active and the weight has to be on the outsides of your feet. Your shoulder blades draw towards each other. There's no tension across the um, front of the chest. The breathing muscles know where they are. The toes are spread. The arches are active and exhaling up you come. All right, I've not done this in lockdown. We go as they on the foot bar into that whole ski. If anyone ever did skiing as a beginner, you learn how to snow plow. That's what this feels like. I've got my knee joint turned in, my hips feel stretched. Inhale, good morning, Jam, and breath out, come back up. Remember, just seeing other people in the room, if this medial rotation is horrible for you, don't do it. Go back to parallel. Otherwise, as we come in, your knees come towards each other, but the lion's gain on this is that pushing the ground away, you feel the side bottom have to stretch out. I get the sensation 
that I'm pulling my knee joint backwards as I open out at the hip. If you think about it, your body wants to go rolling the upper body in and opening out. Now, if that helps without you rounding your back, then do so. Whenever you learn to ski, it's so interesting how you see people doing snowplow and their upper body seems to want to mimic the lower body. Whichever way, I'm doing this action of medial rotation at the thigh bone to create um, mobility really around the hip. It, it eases you out in the glute med muscle. Inhaling down we go with absolute symmetry. Breath out for those legs um, straight, obviously in, in medial rotation. Press the ground away and let that go. We're going to move on quickly to our lunge position because that's the equivalent of single leg. We won't be long here, but you'll step your leg back, find your symmetry and find that backwards lunge and then come up to a tap. Inhaling back you go, breath out up you go. You're taking your posture into the scooter shape. The load is dominant now, it's like single leg work, the dominance is on your left leg. Backwards we go and up we stand. Inhaling and exhaling. Checking that your front foot, the ankle doesn't want to roll in or out. And then the back foot, the heel stays to the ceiling. Inhaling, hinging back, exhaling, stood up. I took my eye off my gaze. All right, next time is your last time. And up you come. Find your squat, find your symmetry with both feet down and then take the back leg away. Here we go, we sit back and stand up. Inhaling, hinging and standing. Inhale, but down you go and breath out, up you come. You use your breathing, the breath out, the trunk connects. As you push the floor away, spread your toes, stabilize your foot with the outside of the um, arch and the outside of the right thigh, your right thigh could almost imagine it was pulling out sideways a bit. Load your heel and standing up. Inhaling back into this simple pattern of movement but fundamental to real living. Okay, we have one more. And up you come. All right, we're ready for our Pilates. Your body's nicely warm. This first section, section A, I'm probably going to send you all drawings so that you can get some idea of what to tick off in your understanding. In this all fours sequence, your shins are flat, your feet are relaxed. Now, if that gives you um, cramp in your arches, then go back to this position here. But whichever way, all fours, true box shape, inhaling and exhaling, already established. You've got your spinal rolling, which we call cat cow. Breathing out then. As you draw the pelvic position into its imprint, follow through the spine until you end up with your nose pointing to your thighs. You have a huge inhale and then breathing out again, start sending the tailbone. Noticing where the pelvis leads to the lower back, leads to between the shoulder blades as your cleavage picks up and your shoulder blades pull together. Have a huge inhale to lengthen the oblique, that's the belly area. Exhaling. Imagine the ground being pulled away from the abdominals, um, but the hands and the shins and knees pushing against the ground. Breathe in, make your spine feel lengthened. Breathe out, start to send. As you press the ground away without sinking the trunk, you'll find your spine moves more easily because there's more space. Just try that again for me. Imagine pushing with your hands and your shins, then use your breath out to pelvic imprint, roll through the spine, and with a very active push against the ground, there should be a very different sensation. Keep pushing against the ground as you then take the next breath to send the sit bones up, pull the cleavage forwards, tailbone to the ceiling. Now, if you're not sure if you're pressing against the ground, here's the evidence. Stay in this shape and just relax. That's the difference. If you're pushing, through the contact points of the floor, can you feel the lightness to the spine? Ask yourself that question. Okay, people, exhale and find that scent of a straight spine or a neutral spine. From there, then we straight into the right leg reaching, make it strong, and the left arm reaching, 
The ground is now being pushed away with your shin and your hand at the other side. Breathe out, slide your arm and leg to straight. Breathe in and pull back to the knee, grazing the ground. Breath out, reach the leg. Breathe in, shoulders away from the neck. This is a beginner's connection, but how many of us relax in the wrong places and therefore don't get the right results? You've got one more here. Breathing out and breathing in. Going to the other side of the body, ground yourself through the um, hand connection. Send your left leg out and your right arm. Inhale, come back to a graze. Exhale. Breathing in. So you've got pelvic stability, shoulder stabilization, and the abdominals switch on because the breath muscles trunk stabilize you. Your aim today is that the leg that straightens straightens, not left half bent, half straight. Last time, building up that stability connection and here we are. Breathing therefore, on the next breath out, shrink the tum in, set your right leg out again, make it straight. On the next out breath, take your hand, pelvic tilt as you start to pull the right knee under you, and then send it away again, reaching to straight without the lower back moving. Your lower back will pelvic tilt, your ribs will pull in as you come to touch the thigh, and then flow away again without losing your square neutral pelvic position. Exhale, we've got the flex, it's like going into a bit of imprint. Inhale, don't make it all come from your upper body, stabilise through the armpit. Exhaling. And inhale, we have one more. Breathe out, keep the sense of pushing the ground away from the grounded leg, from the grounded hand, and you're ready for the other side. Four point grounding, keep breathing. Send your left leg out, let your right arm move. Breath out, then start to pelvic tilt. Pull the knee, touch the knee. Inhale and reach. You will feel the obliques if you're doing this as I'm describing. The breath out is the equivalent of going to an imprint, the rib cage tucks under the navel in your mind and the pelvic position. There's this fractional tilt, you've got this imprint of the spine and then the neutral spine. Exhaling to imprint, inhale to neutral and let that be. Moving on, keeping this shoulder stability. The next position, the right leg reaches, it's straight, it's pointed. This is um, an exercise that's known as single leg kick, further in the series, we're doing this in all fours. You go, point to the ceiling, heel to the bottom, and stretch away. Keep pushing the ground away as you go, kick, kick, reach. Inhale, one, two, reach, exhale. Inhale, and reach. Now switch the breath, inhale, and reach, I looked in, uh, I shouldn't have looked, you've got point, heel, and reach. And the essence here is the ability to kick that leg to your bum without the hip moving and without the thigh bone dropping. So one, two, and reach. Changing sides, push the ground away. Exhale, core connect. Let the left leg reach out and take it to its long line. You've got one, two, and point. Sniff, 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 or other way around with the breath. You'll notice that the leg has to stay reaching up against gravity and that the thigh can't make the lower back move. The moment I look at what I'm doing, I can't do it. It really is sensation of point, flex, point, point, flex, point, without your thigh bone dropping, okay? So when my heel goes to the bum, I don't let the thigh bone move. That's the essence of the move. Letting that go then finally, going back to your right hand side, shoulder stability, trunk stability, pelvic stabilization, neutral, heel to the ceiling. Let's start this exercise knowing that we're pressing against our shins, pressing against our hands, and we've got the heel to the ceiling. Inhale, the right knee taps the ground. Exhale, push away. Whoop. 
forming the trunk to stabilize while your right leg moves through hamstring, length and strength, or pelvic mobilization. The trunk has the greatest job to stay grounding through a three-point position as the limb almost floats up and down, hamstrings in the shortened range, and come back. You've got the other side, three-point kneeling, trunk stabilization. Leg goes up, notice the hip. If the knee doesn't touch the ground as it comes down, you've twisted up the hip in a bit to create a bigger range. Don't. Exhaling. Inhale, mobilizing, floating. Breath out, pressing the ground away as you push your heel to the sky. Inhaling, hinging at the hip. Feel the obliques as part of your breath out. When your thigh can only go as high as your hip flexor allows. When I look at my left hand side, I've said it before, I've got less range of movement at the hip than I have on my right. So I make sure I don't fake the range of movement. I keep to my hamstring and keep my trunk stable. One more. At which point your upper body should be tired. You're going to go onto your front now. So lying down, get your feet to the very end of the mat. We've got our swimming. This first opening sequence then is all about what we call the posterior chain. That's from heels to the bum um, and then to the upper back with the abdominals working. In your swim, you take your um, fingers on top of fingers, elbows turned out. I always get my nose pointing to my thumbs and my legs are long. From there, I've got the ground under my forearms. My rib cage is connecting, the crown of the head is reaching, my head is gently floating. Let your left leg reach and then lower it. Let your right leg reach and lower it. Inhaling, leg, leg. Exhaling, leg, leg. Breathe in, reach, reach. Breathe out, reach, reach. Now, as you do this swim legs, evidence that you're doing it as Joseph intended and as your body needs, is that nothing's happening to the lower back. Your pubic bone is dominant. Now create rhythm. My forearms know where the ground is. I work hard at breathing and keeping a sensation of a lengthened leg. My legs look fluttery, not awkward, and the origin of movement comes from the sit bone to the thigh, um, hamstring area, and my effort of the breath is keeping my rib cage core connected. My body feels lengthened. And let that go. That should have woke you up, hamstring glute. Find your heels together. Good morning, Kath and Andrea. Your heels are together. Keep your hands in the same place. We now have um, heel squeeze prone. Forehead is still hovering. You know where the ground is in terms of your forearms. With the heels squeezing and the feet flexed, your thighs are slightly turned out. On the breath out then, squeeze on the heels and let the thighs reach away, shoulders away from the neck, and the inhale, lengthen out and down. Exhaling, heels connect, inner thighs connect, side bottom connects. And more significantly folks, your rib cage draws to the belly button draws to keep your pelvis position as neutral. Your pubic bone is dominant. So we're concentrating, we're flowing, and the breathing muscles are making a much more smooth movement there and back as it were, continuously. Heels to the bum. Last time, the thighs feel as though they're reaching away from the hip bones. The hip bones refuse to drop into the floor. The pubic bone, dominant. Now reach the legs away, we go back to our swim. To do this, I'm gonna suggest you take your hands either side, the forehead facing the floor, the nose pointing to the floor, the legs are long. Turn the thumbs to the ceiling, turn the palms of the hands to the equivalent of a chopper hand. Let's have the right leg and left arm up, core connect and exchange. So you're gonna go alternating 
Reach the crown of the head away. I've said if it's in your lower back, then it ain't where it belongs. Now we're taking it more to a flutter. There and up and down, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhaling, exhaling. If you want to reach your arms, and you can continue without it going into your lower back, or you want to have your arms by your sides, shoulder blades more dart-esque in the upper body, that's great. What you do have to have in this reciprocal workload, you should try talking and doing this. <laughs> it isn't the easiest thing to achieve. Inhaling and exhaling. Okay, folks, and reach. From there, then, we come onto our back. So, part B, you can use a head cushion if you want. So, get one ready. You may or may want, not want to bother, but it's your choice. Lying on your back. I'm having to catch my breath. You try talking like your front's not good. You lie on your back and your pelvic position settles. The back of the ribcage settles. You control your breathing, which if you're breathing as I'm describing, particularly on lying on your front, it should take far more out of you. We're going to take ourselves to the pelvic imprint using the pelvic floor and the obliques. And the next breath out then, curl up through the head, neck and shoulders rolling the spine. So this B set for exercise and it starts off in the 100 position. We've woken up the long spine from the heel to the head when lying on our front and all fours. We're now waking up spine and supine. So you're lying on your back, you've already curled, you're holding onto the back of the thighs and inhale down you go. Breathe out, you can see your toes rolling up with your nose to your navel all the way through up and down. Just two more as we set ourselves into the right shape. And one more, pull your inner thighs in. Exhaling, as you roll up, send your legs away. Inhale, pull the knees back in again. I've got a chilled out shoulder. This is the flow, the concentration, pulling navel to spine, keeping the imprint of the lumbar. And when your legs lengthen away, your abdominals work really hard. If the only way you can achieve the legs moving is to push the hands behind the thighs, that's fine. You're looking to achieve symmetry. Back of the pelvis heavy equally. You flex at the ribcage part of the spine. And your shoulders are chilled. Your shoulder blades are off the ground. Remember if you need to curl and uncurl because your spine's so stiff and your abdominals equally relatively weak, then do so. Otherwise, here we stay. Okay, let the head go down, lift the legs, and you've got your exhale to lift and circle, inhale to lower. Keep the hands pressing against the ground, and notice the back of your pelvis. Your legs can only reach into that circling action to the place where you can maintain the absolute imprint of your lumbar, not a full slow back pressure, but you just know it's there. We're going to change the direction, curl up and watch the thigh bones. Exhale up through the side, circling, inhale, navel drawn in, imprint of the lumbar, nose to navel. Last two, last one, and pull in. Okay, we're going to go straight into rolling up. The first one will feel like a force majeure along the body. So breathe in, exhale, and roll. Inhale up here. I'm going to take you down by degrees now. Exhaling, pelvic tilt rolling, and exhale. Breathe in then now and start to pelvic tilt. Breathe out. And... Inhaling, make sure both thighs are level as you take yourself down. This is how we'll learn to do a true roll-up. There are many reasons why some postures don't do it. You may be top-heavy, you may be hugely lordotic. The bendy wenders tend to be able to throw themselves up and down. People with a wider hip, you can get yourselves up and down easily. People with 
very long levers which counterbalance the resistance, you can too. So keep going with me, inhaling the rhythm and the roll of the pelvis and the lumbar, the exhaling and the returning back up. As I said last week, if you do this at the end of the day, it's so, so much easier because your body temperature is deeply warm and therefore your spinal mobility is greater. We've just got two more. Notice both sides of the obliques. And take yourself all the way down and bring your heels under your knees. The other thing about rolling up and down is it, it rolls your knickers and your shorts and whatever you're wearing up and down. So real be nice. You're into your hip lift or your spine bridge. On this one, you pull your heels under your knees, you breathe deeply in, you're in neutral. Exhale, press into the ground with your feet and your hands and lift. Inhale, roll your spine down. And we're going bracing glute. Exhale, push the knees forwards, lift the hips. Inhale, and roll the spine down, looking for either side to be identical. Exhaling, pelvic floor. Navel to spine, press that ground away, you're in spine bridge. We're rolling the spine down, a bit of a combination really, but this is us mobilising the spine. On the glute brace, you go up effectively in neutral, wherever your neutral is, and on the journey down, you mobilise from the back of the scapula, shoulder blades through, till you end up mobilising through the lower back and rolling back into your neutral. Of pushing up is your glute brace, inhale to roll down is the mobility work. Now we've got giant steps, so glute brace up, pick one leg up and back down. There's no rolling now, there's just lifting and activating. Exhale, giant step up, inhale back down with symmetry, ground the heel as you lift up the hips with symmetry. Ground your heel, lift up your hip. And again, your job is to concentrate to know what's happening in you. That concentration is the connection. That's the whole control. And I can't control that for you. I can suggest it. I can't make it happen in your body. All right, we've got one more giant step. Control and back down. From there then, put your hands behind your thighs and bring yourself up. We now have the rolling like a ball. It's another balance move. For rolling like a ball, hold on to your shins. We did this last week twice. Let your head look down and start to slide your feet backwards till you feel you're on the back of the sit bones. Breathe out. Pull the rib cage and obliques together and the nose close to the thighs and then float those feet up. Remember if you have osteoporosis, or anything that goes into kind of weakened bones, then don't do this, but you can do the balance and the return, asking your obliques, that's your abdominal belly area, to shorten. Now for the rolling like a ball, if you can balance and you have no issues that mean you can't, the breath in allows you to start to tilt, back you go, and the breath out pulls you back up to balance. Inhaling pelvic tilt, exhale back up. Concentrate. Now notice whether you start pivoting in a circle. If you do, you're not focusing on your obliques at the start of the roll, and one oblique's working harder than the other. If you can't balance, you're using all of your limbs and none of your abs. Okay. Leave that one alone. Hello, we've got people tuning in halfway through. So that ends the B series. We're now going into the um, abdominal series. Forgive me if you're needing notes. I want to make sure I teach you the same, same, same. So lying on your back again, rolling like a ball should have led you to be able to roll backwards and down. We're going back to imprint. The spine's beautifully warm. I'm going to pull one chin in, curl up, and paint your hand to the ankle joint of the leg that's come in and place the other hand to the top of the shin. Pull your other leg up and reach it out. You're flexed up, your pelvis is level, you're inhaling to switch sides 
and then exhaling to switch sides. Inhale, exhale. Now go switch, switch with the breath in, switch, switch with the breath out. Notice whether you're twisting. When your legs move, there can't be a kind of shift of the pelvis. The legs are moving, single leg stretch. The stretch elements is the leg straightens out and your pelvis stays true. Sniff, sniff. Slow it down if it needs to be slower. Once more inside, play with pace, but don't forsake the breath and then pull your knees in. Breathing, ready for a bleak crisscross curl. Place your hands behind your head. You're gonna take the left leg out and pull your armpit towards your right thigh. Come bending knee center, exhale. Center. Notice I don't roll onto the side of my armpit. I simply crisscross my elbow to my opposite side. I crisscross the oblique line. I pull one shoulder blade off the floor more than the other. I don't roll from side to side. Inhale. So you've got the same as single leg stretch really, but we now rotate it to some degree, twisting, crisscrossing the rib cage to the pelvic line. The pelvis stays true. Once more each side. And pull knees into the chest. Ready for double leg stretch. Keep the imprint, make sure you're level and curl up. So we're going to do slowly. The exhale connects you to the core, the belly to the spine. The breath in, the legs start to reach away. The arms reach here. The breath out, in you come again. Inhaling, arms up, exhaling back in. You go one and two. If it's in your neck, then you're not managing to pull your shoulder blades away from the ground. So you can do each one as a single unit. You can curl up, breathe in and reach your arms and legs with the shoulder blades off. Breathe out, pull the legs in and settle down. Exhale, curl. Inhale, reach the arms and legs. Exhale, pull back in and settle down. If you can stay up, it's a two breath sequence and the inhale is the reach and the breath out is the rotation of so shoulders, arms circle. So they circle, ready for your breath out. One more, inhale, and exhaling, head down, rock side to side if you need to. These four movement patterns are meant to be done one after the other, okay? But I don't want poor technique. I do know how I'm teaching, and it matters that we get this right. We're now into single leg stretch. Exhale, curl up and reach for your right leg that's straight. Set your left leg to where you can feel the reach, and you go for one, two, exchange legs, one, two. Both legs go a reach, reach, and reach, reach. Your thigh bones want to be absolutely parallel. Your shoulder blades are off the floor, and the reach, reach doesn't disturb the pelvis. The reach, reach has a square pelvis, and the legs are reaching against gravity, one away from the hip to the floor, or the wall at the other end, the other one to the ceiling. The hands give a gentle tug, tug. One, two, inhaling, one, two, or you can use your breath the other way around. It matters not, except that you breathe, breathe, and pull your legs in. Okay, here we go. Into your side kick, which we're developing. <coughs> I need to cough. So side kick is um, actually, uh, it's sequence C in my planning. We're missing out sequence D for now. So sequence C is the sides of you 
Again, you start off with side balance. All these moves actually are relatively about balance. We've been learning how to put our hand um, under our head and ideally our other hand under the head. I'm in pure neutral, having lined up my spine against the back end of the mat, but then angled my legs forwards. So I'm in side kick position, which is legs forwards of the pelvis. Your position goes, pull the legs forwards and it's a kick, kick. Point the toe and as your leg comes past the main line of the body, you lift up the side ribs. And we go, lowering it down, kick, kick, and reach and pointing back up and Inhale to expand the underneath side of you into long line neutral. Exhale, you've got this shrinking here. Inhaling, the extending into neutral. The pelvis stays true as you kick. And the foot, as you kick that leg forwards, it doesn't want to be to the floor. It wants to be level with the hip, ideally. Okay? So the legs staying along the same plane of movement. Kick, kick. And the pelvis staying true into neutral. So the technical element here is that you learn to extend the underneath side oblique, keep the pelvis truly neutral as you move the thigh within the hip. Okay, make that your last one and slide your legs together. Glance down at the body, make sure they really aren't behind you. You're in neutral pelvis. You can use the head cushion, remember, under the head, or I'll put that behind me. You can have your arm here. Side, it's side balance still, pelvis is level. Inhaling, up the leg goes, breathing out, down it comes. The gentle flag movement now. The pelvis is stable. You're breathing laterally, you're breathing into side balancing. The underneath leg is strong against the ground and offering pr a pressure downwards as the top leg floats and floats. Inhale, you feel as though it's mobilizing the thigh within the pelvic joint. There's no sensation of um, not being stabilised in neutral. One more before we move on to double legs. And put the hand in front. So in Pilates, it's, it can't be always aggressive. I know that sometimes, because we can see you, we can work you harder. Although the truth is we do bypass these basic abilities. And this basic ability, as you get older, will become something that you'll be so glad of so on this one then, you inhale, lengthen those legs, point those toes, exhale and back down. You're aiming to not allow the pelvis to roll. I would say it's true that almost everyone almost rolls back, don't. Use your obliques as you're inhaling and exhaling and we're moving on. Now place your top leg, foot in front as the underneath leg lifts, lengthens and lowers lengthens. I'm still in neutral. I haven't rolled my hips just because I've brought my leg in front. I'm building up the underneath oblique and I'm building up the top oblique but I'm getting a connection with my adductors. There's no stress in my neck and as I lift the leg I can feel the inside of the hip oblique area activating along with my inner thigh. <clears throat> One more and allow that to go. And we're now in the important hip hitch which means the top leg's going to lift and you're going to shorten the waist. Check it hasn't rolled backwards, put your hand in front and then let your underneath legs squeeze the daylight from between them, then lower both legs down again. Top leg lifts, exhale to suck the hip bone here, make sure you haven't rolled back and then squeeze the daylight from between the legs and lower back down. We're just going to do three more. The leg lifts and you hitch. Core connect, pelvic floor, inner thigh, lift, and then lower back down. This is one of the hardest in terms of technical difficulty to get it accurate. But if we can nail this, I can take us to places we haven't yet been in Pilates, certainly on the mats. Um, I believe lockdown is going to be long. So the more I can train you, to feel, find and know without injury, then the better we can get on with this. We've got one more then, so lift and hitch, shrink the tongue, drive your underneath leg up to close the daylight from between the legs, point the toes, lower down swiftly to the other side. Remember, you've got your side kick. 
my aim is that we know where these positions are set up. If I can just give you clues and that we get to the stage where by the end of lockdown, it's like cycling, this is how it is. You're lined up with the edge of the mat behind you as though it's neutral. Your hand is under your head. Actually, I need to make sure my head is on the floor, on the mat as it were. And my thighs are forwards. I go, top legs lifted. We've got kick, kick, point and extend. Exhaling, inhale, to reach, pulling into the elbow underneath waist. Exhale, inhaling, and this is a beautiful mobility work, okay? The ability to lower the side down and kick and reach the hip open and the side waist lifts is really what it's about. So you're mobilizing the hip along with the spine. One, two, the spinal mobility is from the armpit to the rib cage, okay? On the underneath side, inhaling. Last time, underneath the leg is heavy and knows exactly where the ground is. And then, straightening out the legs. Remember, you can practice these moves in isolation. My legs are straight, <coughs> I need to cough, and my feet aren't, legs aren't behind me. Inhale with point, and exhale low. When things in the sequence feel easy, enjoy them. Don't think I want something harder. Tune into the detail of how it feels to flow. Because the truth is, as we get through the repertoire, we're at beginner's level, the moves that are really hard on us should become flowing and easier. This is a good example of what it feels like to stabilise the body and move a leg or an arm. The whole thing about stabilisation is trunk stability so that your legs and arms can do whatever you want them to do with load or without load. Okay people, you ready for your two legs up and down. The side balance series, which is what this is, to keep the gap underneath the floor, sorry, the gap away from the floor on the underneath side as you lift and lower. The legs aren't lifting very high, the pelvic position stays truly in its neutral. So as your legs reach and lift and lower, hello Leslie Howell, and lower, inner thighs are tight together and down. Ready to take that top leg to the ground, underneath leg then, lift and lowers. Work out where your pelvis is. You need to know, concentrate on where the pelvis is and what you feel frontal pelvically. As each leg does whatever it does, the pelvis feels the cueing of the stability system. The breathing out, the leg lifts, and the inhale, it lowers. It's a lengthened lift, you've connected your rib cage, your navel, your spine, you can feel the adductors, and they're making more sense to your pelvis of your pelvic stabilizers. Last time, and let that go. Stretch out both legs for our more technically difficult hip hitch. So the leg lifts, you suck the hip bone to the ribs and the underneath waist is now grounded and you bring the close the daylight on that leg, point the toes and lower back down. This is one of the best actions to truly connect the body 3D. Our weakest area will always be anything sides because we don't live size, but we still need all of the sideways activation to make pelvic strength and structural stability, okay? The leg lengthens, hitch, hip, hip, hitch. Underneath leg, close that daylight, doing less and less through the shoulder area, more through the side bottom of the bleeds. Last one, lift and hitch. I've shrunken my waist on the ground, Underneath leg, really working hard through the adductor, pulls the legs together and releasing backwards. Okay, next then, you've got your teaser prep. In theory it's going to finish, but I'm not going to want to. I'll do two more moves out of this um, later series. On Wednesday, we'll power through this, people, okay? So your teaser prep, you will lean back off your sit bones. In teaser, your upper body is more open as opposed to closed. <coughs> I'm having problems with my chest at the moment, but hey, forgive me for coughing. Sliding backwards back of the sit bones. So your teaser prep requires you to be able to lift the leg up 
have the shin the height of the knee and then lift the other leg up with the shin the height of the knee and then lower back down again. I'm going to go exhaling, lift, exhaling, lift and inhale, lower the thighs back down. I'm changing the lead leg as I prep. I've got equal load at my sit bones. My shins come, my feet are as high as my knees and I lower back down. And my upper back has stayed in its kind of neutral, whereas my lower back, you're almost in imprint. Crown of the head reaches. Now, stick with that level or let both legs lift. But if you can get your shins as high as your knee joint, then life's going well. Exhaling. And inhale. So having your hands behind your thighs might be what you need. Having your hands to the floor might be what you need. But making sure that you actually core connect as you make the flexor and the oblique work. Legs reaching up, that's teaser legs, okay? You can't have legs here, that's not teaser legs. Your teaser legs take the shins above the knee and then the feet higher than the face. Play with it, exhale. Teaser shins and teaser reach. Add your arms with the cherry on the cake. It is a balance. So don't be afraid. Let's go again, exhaling. Find your level, breathe in. Breathing out, let the legs reach, breathe in. Breathe out, balance, 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 and come back. Okay, folks, um, I'm going to the side plank. I've missed out two of the moves. I thought I'd have time today, but I haven't, so it's not fair on those that have to work or homeschool. Let's remind our bodies about this side plank position. You have your front leg, the top leg is the front leg, front of the mat. Bottom leg is the back leg, back of the mat. The hand is under the armpit and you've got your shoulder stability work. We breathe out, push into your front leg, breathe in, breathe out and come up into pyramid. Turn and look at your back leg, point your front hand to the back leg and then pivot round and down again. Breathe out, remember you push into the ground with the front leg, armpit, up you pivot, rotation, reach the hand, and inhaling, shoulder stabilisation. <sighs> Elevate upwards, you pushing the ground away. Remember, all of Pilates is about being able. That sensation of lifting and reaching to the sky and returning down. Once more, exhaling, <sighs> lifting and reaching, reach the hand and inhaling, pivoting down. I think I've given you enough cues to say, if this just goes straight into your neck or pinch your parts of the shoulder, you have to just be learning to lift, keeping the shin grounded and knowing where the ground actually is. The reason people don't get this pattern of movement is because they forget that it's not about the pattern of movement, it's about knowing where the ground is and where your breath is. So you go up, you come up, you reach as your hips go higher, you pivot through your armpit shoulder and keeping the ground here. Exhaling, press into the ground. Inhaling to come airborne and reach into rotation and breathing out or in, it really doesn't matter, it's the control of the shoulder armpit. Exhale, zip hollow, press into this leg, reach for the foot, and return back down. Two more, we go one, reaching up, pressing the ground with the foot front, and coming back down, just say two more. Let's do one more, because we love it. Up you go, airborne, down you come, and being very glad. So, I have to finish there to be fair to people that have to work. Um, I hope you're enjoying it and getting the reasoning behind it. The, I will try and get you, certainly by the end of this week, the pictures that I draw, so that you can tick off your, your actual understanding of what the movement is that we're trying to have as a memory in our body. If your body has muscle memory, a certain words will go, yeah, I get that, I'm going there, I know where there is in me. 
I long that you know where these moves are in you and you start to appreciate the genius of practicing Pilates systematically. Okay, it's a goodbye from me today. Tomorrow you will have strength and endurance, so it'll be the whole other end of the spectrum, making us stronger and able to endure for, long, endure for longer. So let's endure the lockdown today. It's a bright day out there. Get yourselves out and walk, and I will see you tomorrow. I'm all out of breath. Bye for now. Well done for following.